remember there's no absent moral agent. So that we say two things. First of all, we think sovereignty is an absent moral agent. Not interfering is an absent moral agent. We'll talk about that later. And then we said, well, look, if you don't know what's best to do, then maybe it's best not to go and kill lots of here, people here. as the moral agent that you want to pick just like that. And that's the same answer to this thing. Look, we always make some sort of moral conscience. We have to choose something. So I say, OK, if you have to choose something, choose not to start a horrible war. If you don't know how good, if you have no objective way to tell what will happen, then don't kill lots of people, which is something that will sure happen. And we'll talk about that a bit more later. And they said, look, on the ground, we have lots more choices. When we don't go to war, we give up lots of choices. Yes, we give up lots of bad choices. And we're completely fine with giving up lots of horrible choices, which will hurt people. And they said, look, it's better to have a balance of power. We want everyone to have an army so there won't be wars. wars. First of all, we think that doesn't actually work in the real world. And secondly, we think, and this we will show you in my second point, that it is better to have oppressive regimes. It is better not to be in that situation where we have a, where we have this balance of power and we have these wars than the fact that uh, it's even but it's better to have the oppressive regimes than to have wars because of this balance of power. And now to my two points. Firstly, I will talk about what is a criteria for war, when should we go to war, and you can guess the answer. And um, the second one will be, I will compare the, how bad war is compared to horrible regimes and bad things that happen, which they say are worse, and I will tell you that they are not worse than what happens in a war. First of all, opposition would like to have us believe that we have lots of values that are good enough, that are important enough, that we should go to war. As I said, human rights or possibly democracy, if people are getting very badly hurt, these are two important. Now we notice this same debate goes on in different places. The same debate is going on in Iran, and they have different values, and they think that Muslim dominance is something that's the most important to them, and so important that they should go to war for. In communist Russia, they have different values for which they think they should go to war. On that same idea, every single person, because they are not objective, because they see these things, Yes, these, these uh, ideas from somewhere. These ideas don't just pop into your head from out of nowhere completely. Where do you get these ideas from? From your education, from what happened when you were a child, from the people around you in your own country. You get these things from the social sanctions that the society around you gives to you, and those are different from every place. That's why every single place it puts different values into your head, and inherently, we obviously can't have the same values in different places. That means every single person has different values, and they cannot objectively say what are the right values for the whole world. In that situation, we can find crazy Israelis claiming that religion is more important than food and water itself. <laughs> Not 
to hurt us, not to use violence against us. If we say our values are important enough to hurt you, it is worthwhile for them to hurt us when they can. It is worthwhile for them to try to impose their values on us so they are not in danger anymore. And we think that is a horrible thing that happens. So what we see is by accepting any criteria for war, you mean not only that a war by anyone is justified for what is best for them, but you also mean that everyone will feel threatened and therefore more likely to use violence and you get all the damage of the war. To my second point, I want to compare the damages of war, the harms in war, and being under an oppressive regime. Because they are talking about like these horrible regimes that do things. First of all, how bad is war? Because you they say, look, wars, you have a chance to die. We think it can be much, much worse than dying. You can be hurt and incapacitated. I'd like all the men out there to try to think of a single place that you do not want to get shot in and would rather get shot in your head. I'd like all the women to think about what happens if you do get captured alive in a war, and we think that's much worse. But more than that, you will see your friends dying and be unable to help them, have the feeling that you cannot do a single thing to save the people most important to you. And more than that, even if everything goes well, you will live with the fact that you killed other people, which in any normal society is one of the most horrible things. We think that in many cases, that is the best option that we can have in war. We think we can hope to die and not suffer the trauma and distress that happened in the dead. What happens under oppressive regimes? Obviously, lots of your rights are taken. It's not a good thing to be an oppressive regime. You may be harassed. You may suffer violence. You may have your rights of the democratic rights and free speech rights taken away. But we think that most people do not suffer so much in those regimes. We think most people live, live relatively normal lives, or even pretty bad lives, but not close to the horrors of war. And we think their rights taken away are usually not as bad. Even suffering violence, even being harassed by the state, is not nearly as bad as what we see going on in war. And we think that's not even close. Look at Russia and Georgia and tell me what was worse when they were oppressed by Russia or when they started a war with Russia. And where were their rights more severely harmed? For those reasons, we beg you to oppose. Thank <laughs> you.